Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Uh, Rachel's back this time, so that's a plus. Um, and she's got a great case for us. I'll tell you why this is special at the end of the case, but until then, stick around. Rachel, what's this case? So we have a 24-year-old female. She presents to the ER with severe left toe pain after a trauma to her left forefoot. She says about 7 p.m., she had a 10-pound object fall directly onto her left toe, mm -hmm. caused her to double down in pain. Okay. She could not walk or bear any weight on that foot afterwards, but initially just thought it was pain from something falling on her foot, um, took 600 of ibuprofen and a gram of Tylenol, iced it, elevated it, started to feel a little bit better, about five or six hours after that, the pain came back again, some ice mm -hmm. started to get a little bit better. Three hours after that, she was rigoring in pain, couldn't get out of bed. This is Eastern time, so it's like 2 a.m. Yeah. Um, couldn't get out of bed, so she went into the ER. You know, in the ER. She... Wait, before time out, before you get there, I just want to clarify some things. Um, no numbness or no tingling, right? To... No. And then prior to this trauma, the, the object falling, there was no pain or no difficulty ambulating. She was perfectly fine before. Healthy 24-year-old. Okay. And then the object fell and then she's having pain. Mm -hmm. And she took pain medication, ibuprofen, but that didn't help. And now she's going to the ER. Exactly. Okay. So in the ER, you know, she's afebrile. Her vital signs are stable. She's a little tachycardic mm -hmm. coming from the pain. She's not in any severe distress. Her lungs, heart, abdomen, everything's fine. All of her extremities are normal except for the left forefoot. Okay. You know, no, there's all the skin's entirely intact. The, on her left toenail, there is ecchymosis about forty percent below the below the nail. You know, she's her sensations intact. She's neurovascularly intact, has great pulses, has full range of motion of the distal digit. She has pain to palpation over the distal phalanx and the distal metatarsal. And that's that's about it. No other pain anywhere else. You know, her ankle joint is has full range of motion. Her right entire uh, lower limb mm -hmm. is perfectly fine. Okay. Completely neurovascularly intact. Completely so nothing else going intact. on aside from the ecchymosis that you see underneath the, the toenail, right? And some and tenderness to palpation to the first metatarsal and the toe. And the toe. The first toe. Yep. Okay. I'm um, assuming they got x-rays next, yep. right? Got a little bit of pain medicine in her x-rays. Mm -hmm. uh, AP lateral oblique of the forefoot. Mm -hmm. Shows no fracture, no dislocation, nothing very concerning mm -hmm. on a prelim read. So... Her main area of concern is this. Just the ecchymosis underneath the toenail. Exactly. This is subluminal hematoma. Yep. Okay. So with that being her only area of concern and the toenail is starting to rise, become elevated off of the nail bed, um, it was evacuated, trephinated with a portable quadri. Those things are so cool, by the way. So cool. I like them. Um. Yeah, so it was like local anesthesia, digital block, and then trephinated toe. It's also very satisfying when you're just like going through it and then all the blood comes out and the patient almost instantly instantly feels relief just because the pain is due to the pressure inside. Yeah. Um, cool. Exactly. Okay. And then trephinated, I'm and assuming you have to dress it up because you opened up. Yeah, dressed up with, you know, basset, well, it's obviously sprayed clean. Yep. Basset tracin wrapped around in curlix. Mm -hmm. And a post option. Okay, so it was dressed up and then... Send well on her way home with the pain medicine if she needed it. Okay, cool. Sublingual hematoma. And okay. we'll tell you why this is special because the patient is sitting <laughs> right here. Uh, yeah. This happened to Rachel two weeks, <laughs> two weeks ago. Yep. And I'm at work and she calls me. She's like, hey, I got a sublingual hematoma. <laughs> I was... I was I was not the provider, by the way. I wish I was, because that would be so much more fun. Um, but yeah, she went to an ER, got the thing evacuated, and now we're talking about it. So uh, we thought this would be a cool little case to talk about. 
just an FYI for anyone that works in urgent care or ER or primary care, they hurt. They look so benign. <laughs> they really is it, hurt. Is it like hot? Like it feels like it's burning? Oh no, not the cautery. Oh. Just the sub oh, 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 hematoma. The hematoma. That hurts. Yeah. Like I'm not one to wince about pain. It's fine. But like <laughs> never <Okay>. again. <laughs> Well, let's talk about sublingual hematomas, guys. So, obviously, hurt. yeah. So, <laughs> you know, the risk factor is going to be obviously trauma. So, the cause is trauma. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a crush type of injury, right? And symptoms will be pain because of the pressure. If you have a crush type injury in the toenail, there's no room to swell uh, because of the toenail being there. So, you have this this like pressure like uh, pain. Um, yeah, it's kind of like if I drop the same 10 pound object on my arm, I, I have all the soft tissue that will exactly. allow for swelling as opposed to under your nail. There's there's no room there's for no that room blood to, to go. Yeah. So all you have this throbbing pressure and pain. So the trepanation when it does it gives you an outlet. Exactly. For the blood so, to drain. Yeah. Um, if it's under 50%, that's an indication for it to be trepanated, right? Mm -hmm. If it's over 50%, then you need to remove the nail and have a nail bed repair. When you do do a nail bed repair, you wanna make sure, be, and trepanation for that fact too, because you're uh, lacerating into the skin, into the toenail, you're uh, posing an infection risk. So you wanna make sure these patients get a tetanus vaccination and make sure they're up to date. Um, and the other thing is they get antibiotics. Did you get antibiotics in a tetanus shot? I'm assuming you're already up so, to date with your tetanus, right? Yeah. yeah, working in a hospital, you're up to date on your vaccines. So no, I didn't get a tetanus shot. Um, and I actually didn't get antibiotics because only about 47% of patients, oh, only 47, the study that I read, only 47% of people that had a termination were followed and developed no infections despite not being on antibiotics. Okay. I think that's more along the lines of if you have a nail bed removal. Mm, sure. Because yeah. you have a greater, of like course. I can show you yeah. my toe. It's, right. Yeah. It's well, like maybe a 16 gauge hole. Okay. That's fair. So, um, but it's dressed up. So you have that protection in that sense. And um, it clots up pretty fast. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. And how are you doing now two weeks later? Great. Um, if I do walk a lot or there's pressure from... If I don't wear my post-op shoe and am a bad patient and wear a normal shoe, there's pressure from underneath because you walk on the ground and then pressure from the top of the shoe. Yep. So that makes it ooze a little bit of blood and causes pain. But if, if you're a good patient and you wear your post-op shoe like you were told, it's fine. Okay. All right. It's just freezing cold where we are right now. Yeah. Or you can be in a warmer weather. <laughs> post-op shoe, warmer weather. Uh, but yeah, guys, that's the case for this week. Uh, I'm sure this will be, I hope this is the only case where we're one of the patients. <laughs> yeah, we'll try not to drop things on my feet. Yeah, ever exactly. Again. <laughs> uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Make sure to subscribe to Catches Every Single Week and like and comment. Um, all right, guys. Bye. Bye.